Hi there, I'm Badger's Den, and today I will be finally doing part two of the End Zombies uh, Resurrection, or just the End Zombies tutorial on well, making a config. So I'm going to assume that you've watched parts one and 1.5, the uh, what each tool does and how to make a nav mesh or edit and such, but I'll still go over some of the basic stuff anyway, just in case uh, you forgot anything. So. You can see here that I've already got a bit of a pre-filled map here. If you saw the test video that I released um, the other day or even earlier today, depending on when I've released this, um, this is pretty much what you're seeing. Uh, it wasn't a perfect thing. Uh, there was definitely quite a few issues with it. Um, but I'll go through what I've done here and, well, why I've done it, I guess. And hopefully this will give you a bit of insight as to how to create your own config. So for anyone wondering, this is on uh, RP... Uh, underscore downtown underscore version 4c i believe that's fixed to charlie um i've only got two areas in use at the moment which is the starting area here where you would spawn there and this area over here now for anyone who has played a uh, downtown you'll be aware that this is a very large map as you can clearly see you've got a whole bunch more of the map we're not going to worry about that at the moment we're just going to worry about these two areas here because i think this is probably the best i'm going to get in terms of showing you how to create a config I guess I should preface this by saying, try to avoid starting big. I know for some people that's going to be like, what? But I want to make amazing, massive configs. And trust me, I did too. And technically, I even did it because my first uh, config was uh, on Gmod, well, not Gmod, because that's what we're doing, on Excess Island, which I will leave a link to in the description below. But that was on the legacy version of End Zombies created by Zetor. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. Uh, but that took over a month to do so unless you're willing to put so much that much time into it And you're an addict to Gary's mod, which I was at the time Then well, by all means go for it then but here we're just starting small and that's really what I recommend You can even do the same thing what I've done here on downtown or even start on, like Construct just you gotta remember that the main thing if you are wanting to uh, Start in config you have to make sure your map has a nav mesh Which I will show you again how to get just go into the nafmesh editor and if you see these boxes then you have a nav mesh and you do not need to worry about it if you don't see these squares though uh, you'll have to go into the console here and type in nav underscore generate now i would like to say before you do this uh, if your map does not have a, uh, a nav mesh try to search on the workshop before you uh, do this because generating a nav mesh in the source engine is not an easy thing it depending on how big the map is it can take hours it can even take days and if you don't have a beefy computer yeah you're not gonna have much fun with it also it makes the game completely unplayable so consider that as well uh, especially if you're doing it on a map this big this will absolutely not take like 10 minutes this will take hours i might even say maybe a day or two depending on how good your pc is and that's why I really recommend you search maps on the workshop. If you don't see one uh, for the map you're looking for, try generating it. But if it's going to take more, if it's gone to like an hour or something, and it's not, it's not even finished, like, like if like two percent done, just stop because you're, you're just choose a different map. You're not going to get anywhere with it. Anyway, with that little pre preface out of the way, let me now go through with you what I've done here and what I've done. So. First things first, let's start with the spawn points. So, for anyone who has played downtown, this is the normal starting area, uh, well, spawn point of the map. Um, I just put a few spawns down here. I put eight. Now, th there isn't really a specified amount. I think it's usually four, because usually that's what you get on Cordry Zombie maps anyway, you know, four people at max. Uh, but obviously, there are servers and such where you can get like tons more people. So, I go for eight just to be on the safe side. Um, and I, I chose this area just because, well, why not? You know, it's the basic area. It's a starting area. You can't go wrong with that. Uh, as for the zombie spawns, I've got two here uh, behind these three barricades. Now, if you're thinking that three seems a bit overkill for this, yeah, you're not wrong. Um, I definitely cannot disagree with that. The only reason I did this here is because the other option was to put props in the way to like front of and fight this middle one here, which I believe I did do on my old version of this map, uh, but I chose to not do that here just for demonstration purposes really, but mainly because zombies love getting stuck on things and it's a bit of a pain in the ass and it also requires having to modify the map mesh 
I'm just kind of wanting to get this over and done with because I've left it for five months. <laughs> anyway, so I've got these two spawns here. So when the game starts, the zombies will just come through. And uh, if I just go, like, fucking uh, uh, properties. So they shouldn't have any flags enabled to them. So they have a... F they are enabled for flags, but they don't have a number or anything assigned to them, which that's normal. Uh, in the starting area, you don't want these spawn points to be assigned to any flags. Because otherwise they don't spawn when you start the game. Because um, then you need to buy a door to open it. Which makes no sense. Because unless you're having a game where you have to open a door to start the game. I guess I can see how that works. But anyway. So I've got two there. And then I've got three up here. Uh, just to have them drop down. And there was... Here's a funny thing as well. There was actually no nav mesh up here the first time I did this. So I actually had to create this nav mesh myself. This little bit up here, that is literally nothing special. And in case you just wonder how I did that, if you haven't, if you can't be bothered watching the 1.5 video, just create areas, click there, right click here, and then connect to them, just uh, marked it, clicked down there a few times, and then boom. So now the zombies can spawn up here and they can drop down. Uh, as for the red uh, guys, the special spawn creators, these are for your hellhounds or your who's who, now, I, or even bosses if you want any. Uh, I should also mention these don't have to be hellhounds if you are on the resurrection pack uh, You'll have other options. You'll have uh, things for like burning zombies to face huggers uh, Keepers like and of course spiders if you if you if you want to test your arachnophobia sure go for it do spiders um, So that's the spawn points out of the way now if you're on the resurrection pack you do have these extra ones uh, boss spawn creator extra zombie spawn creators I'm not going to touch those. It's not It's not that I don't want to. I don't have any experience with them. And to be honest, I don't really want to bother learning them. Because I think... I'm going for the basics here. I'm not going for all the technical stuff here. That's why I'm not even going to touch stuff like buildables or workbench places, which are probably self-explanatory, and teleports and such. If you want to deal with them, you can worry about them on your own time or just try and mess around. Because that's how I learned with all this. The, all this here is just experience just messing around and just see what works so when it comes to rooms um i've got two props here i've got a big fence and a small fence now the big fence is just primarily just to block off so you know you don't have this massive train area you know because you gotta have a little bit of difficulty here if i wanted to i could maybe go a bit extra mile and do what i did uh back in the map where i made it so you had this one narrow path to go uh, through the tunnel um i'll think if I can, I'll leave a screenshot, if I can find one, of what I'm talking about. Uh, but to do the door, um, so in the starting areas, before I actually tell you how to do the door itself, because you should probably know, hopefully, uh, when it comes to doors themselves, you can't keep them pretty cheap when you're starting out. The main idea is, when you're starting out, you're going to have no points. And yeah, if you're solo, that's not an issue. But if you're with like three other people, points are going to be a scarcity at well, at worst, really. So, you have to kind of put them on the cheap end. You'll know... A good way to look at it is look at some Call of Duty zombie maps um, and see how they price things and what they have in them. So, a thousand points, that's pretty much roundabout right. You could even maybe go a bit cheaper for 750. Um, I do remember a map uh, where I played on Ravine, uh, a zombie survival map, and you started out near a pretty compact area and to get out you had to spend 3,000 points and look it's bad enough you're in a tight area but when the best way to get out is you have to spend 3,000 points that's not ideal in the slightest bit it's absolutely annoying actually and that's rather unfair especially if you're with several other people who are all fighting to get as many points as possible so keep that in mind that only really start increasing the prices the further out you go where people can start spreading out a bit um when it comes to guns um try not to have all the overpowered stuff uh, in the starting area so a pistol or, or rifle or even a a double barrel shotgun or something uh, will work try to keep them priced appropriately you know i mean should a pistol really cost like a thousand points I mean, it could do, depending on how powerful it is. I mean, if you've got, to, like, Wave 9 and you've got a Desert Eagle that's still one shot zombies, yeah, I could totally see why you maybe put that to a 1,000 points, but then also consider maybe having it in the uh, mystery box. 
Also, I realise now I've been jumping around a lot. I apologise in advance. <laughs> um, that's just a thing I do. So, with some with some guns like some machine guns and such, 1,250 points, that's around fair enough. But you, can, you can also go for around 750. The best, the best way to do it is just how much... Well, the best way to price these is really how much damage is it really doing. I mean, think of it... Think of it like if you're a player, if you get to round 15, should a Mac 10 still be like killing zombies within like three bullets or something? Not saying that it does, I mean, this definitely doesn't, but no, it really shouldn't be. And if it if it's doing that much damage, either bump up the price or send it to the mystery box. Should because it should not a gun that overpowered should not be that cheap. Um, as for the mystery box, um. You can edit what weapons you have in there by going into the little thing here, map settings, advanced mode, make sure that's ticked, then go into random box weapons. Now, I've already sorted this out, but depending on what weapon packs you have, you'll probably have a crap ton more. Um, I do want to preface this as well by saying, if you have any other weapon packs um, outside of TFA, so if you have customizable weaponry 2.0, M9K, um, Arx customizable weaponry, Try to avoid using those. Um, I think M9K you can get away with, and uh, even FAS, um, but everything else, uh, avoid using. Ideally, you should only use TFA. It's not my choice to make, unfortunately. That's the developers, they've chosen to go with TFA. I can't say why, I'm not a spokesman for them. Uh, but if you do have any other weapon packs that are outside of TFA, the best way just to get only the TFA weapons is hit more, then hit remove, uh, remove all even and uh, then look for the prefix and then look for TFA and just hit add all uh, Now with when it comes to TFA stuff as well, you might get some bases as well Just try to remove those when if you see them now. I, I've had a look and I couldn't see any but you never know But once you do that don't forget to hit submit because otherwise it won't see the changes So so far that's the main area sorted out um, You know you've got your weapons you've got your zombies your special zombies your barricades um, there is also the perks, and with the doors here being red, in case you're not sure, uh, this is the prop remover tool. So whenever you click on a door or a prop anywhere in the map that's coming to the map, or, um, and it turns red, that means that when you start the game, it will be gone. The store will not exist. Those doors over there will not exist either. Um, so zombies can still walk past this pretty fine, and that much still exists here, so that's all fine. Perks. Um, they're yeah, pretty self-explanatory. Just place them wherever the hell you want, really. If you don't want any perks, then I guess you can always have no perks. You can even have just uh, the Dirt Wonder Fist, you know, the one that lets you have any perk where you, where you spend 150 point. What? God, 1,500 points. The words aren't working for me today. I apologize. Uh, but otherwise, that's pretty self-explanatory. That's just personal choice where you want the perks and such. So, moving on. Uh, for the door here, uh, just gotta make sure as well. Enable flag for this. Set a number. Set a price. That's all good. And when you're having a door, especially if you've got stuff like this where you might have multiple rooms, it's worth as well locking it so zombies don't see this as a way to get past until you've opened the door. Best way to do it: uh, click on the door once you've enabled a flag for it, and it is important you enable the flag. If you get any errors saying uh, it's not a door. That's because you haven't enabled a flag. So do that. Then click on it with the nav lock tool and it will turn into this. Then click on the nav mesh directly below it, ideally. Um, and that basically tells zombies they can't go through here. You'll notice as well this area here is this, is a uh, missing nav mesh. And that's because I've manually deleted that. So the, what, this used to be a thing stretched out here. I just split off using the edit tool. Um, edit area. Split the areas of the white lines where you see them. And then just delete that little area there. So we're moving on now. Um, some of these spawns here, these are all set to the flag for this room here. You've got this zombie spawn here in the corner. They don't have to be behind barricades. Uh, as you can see with the ones up there, or even this one, place them wherever you feel is necessary. Uh, we do have a orange block here, as well as a vending machine. So this orange block is the invisible wall. So these basically stop players from prevent going through here. I think zombies can still go through here, but in this instance they shouldn't be because there's no nav mesh behind here. If you have a look, I've deleted it. So the reason why I I put this here is because, well, hypothetically speaking, I mean this isn't going to be released to the uh, to the public. 
anytime soon. Hypothetically speaking, I don't want players getting stuck behind here because this is such a, nut, a tight area. Now, zombies might not have too big of an issue. They might still be able to get through, but it's so tight. You've got basically two entrances here. And, you know, if you get caught between a zombie here and a zombie here and you can't get out or kill them, you, you kind of feel a bit cheated, you know. So I don't like that. So that's why I blocked the areas off over here and over there as well. I just blocked them off with props because don't forget, these are invisible Players will not see you've got an invisible wall here. They will only see nothing. So that's why the props are there as well to visualize. Hey, you can't get back here. Don't even try it. Um, the machine gun here, the Hunter Killer X7. <laughs> uh, wow, that was a fun gun to use in that uh, test video I made. Um, so the reason why it's 3,000 points, I don't think I need to tell you. It's a machine gun, right? I mean, really, machine guns you don't even ever see as war weapons. If you do, 3,000 points is pretty much right around the the margin you want for because they've got a large amount of damage, they've got a high capacity of ammo. You know, you're not running out of ammo for them anytime soon, and you can easily get a, a, quite a few points from them. So I think that goes without saying. Um, we've got some zombie spawns inside the house here, and we've got some fences in the housing. Now, these fences weren't here originally, uh, as you can see, because the windows up there are fine. These are here just to stop people from trying to jump in, um, so I don't forget to tell you that. And we've even got this little fence in the middle of the road, um, so that's just so... Is it? Originally, it wasn't there, so um, I when I first did the video for this, because this is actually version 2, or attempt 2 of making this video, um, I originally didn't put this here, but then I decided it later on. And in case you're wondering why this is attempt two, well, the first version I did was in Fraps, and it turns out Fraps is not like the Source engine. It's very choppy, uh, it was very laggy, and basically it just was not a good video. Um, so overall, um, it's there now, so here we are. Um, so we've got another perk here, stabbing up. So why I put this here, ignore the bin, because I didn't put that there. Uh, stabbing up, because, you know, Originally, this was going to be a bit of a trainee area. I thought, well, you know, if before the fences were put here, I was thinking, well, about the, um, you've got such a big area, you can kind of run around, you know, you can train the zombies and such. Um, the mystery box, um, that's just there because, you know, give people a reason to go somewhere, you know. So, in case you're wondering, why do I have two mystery boxes? Wouldn't that mean there's an issue with them uh, being in two places at once? No, because with mystery boxes, while it is an option, you can have uh, mystery boxes like in multiple areas without needing to like only have one on the map at a time. Uh, what I did was I chose the possible spawn area, and then I did that. So between now the three mystery boxes in the map, in case you remember where the other one was, it was over there. So now when the game starts, at random, it will choose one of these three spots to put a mystery box. And then when you get a teddy bear, you know, that little, little thing, it will move, throw the box in the air, spin around a bit, disappear, and then it will pop somewhere else. So it might it might start here, then it might appear here, or in the starting area. So there's that. Um, and I think what we'll just do now is we'll just look at maybe creating a new area for this. So before, originally, I think I got rid of the nav mesh here for this. Oh, I hadn't. Interesting. Right, so to do this, and to create an area, so here's what we're gonna do. First of all, I'm just gonna create a little area here, it's just a uh, section off. So let's just get rid of that. I think I'm just gonna push this a little bit further into the wall, just because I don't want to always getting caught on this sort of thing. I'll just put it a little bit more. There we go. Uh, so what I'm just gonna do now, delete that. And I will again uh, remind you, if you are making any changes to the nav mesh for whatever reason, Go to the console, nav underscore save, and that's it. It will save the nav mesh. And it's always important to do that, especially if you're doing big works like this, because the last thing you want is for, like, to have a power cut or something, or your the PC or whatever turns up, and suddenly, oh no, I've lost hours of work because I forgot to save my nav mesh. Trust me, I've been there. You don't want it. <laughs> okay, so to do the door, as I said before, we'll make this a new area. So we'll do number three. We'll make this one 1,500 points, enable the flag, click on that. And then what we'll do now is we'll just uh, use the nav locker tool, click there, click there. So now we can go into this new area here. So 
I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not liking this area too much. I'm seeing issues where we've got a massive open area here, which I'm not feeling too keen on. So I think what I'll do is I'll maybe block that off and make this a sobby spawn with some barricades, perhaps. This area doesn't look too bad. I can maybe put a uh, pack a punch here because... You know what, it's a, it's a one little entrance here. Maybe add some uh, invisible walls here to stop people from trying to climb on the walls. Because, why not? So let's do that. So let's put ourselves a Pack-A-Punch. There. Then I'll probably just do a quick time lapse of me just um, walling this off. So, see you in a minute, I guess. Okay, that's done now. So, I know what you're thinking. Why on earth would I even go for the effort of walling this area off here like that? And to put it simply, it's not fun for the player. It's not really fun, okay? Yes, it might be fun if someone goes, Oh, huh, look at me, I can get up here and the zombies can't hurt me. Sure, that's fun, I guess. But at the same time, it kills the fun of the game. You know, the whole point of zombies is that it's endless. You're just there to just absolutely massacre a ton of zombies. Standing on top of a pillar where they can't absolutely reach you is a bit of a nightmare. And yes, I do realise now that having these benches here, which I don't think I can remove, can I? No, I can't. I have to figure that out. Uh, having these uh, stuff here where you can get on top of and not get hurt, it's kind of annoying. And it kills, it sucks the fun out of the game. People will just be like, oh, this is pretty shit. The creator didn't attend for this, clearly. And then people leave. Yeah, they don't subscribe as such. And that's not what you want. So uh, what I'll do now is I will create a new area here. I will put some barricades down, um, if I can find any. And then I will put some zombie spawns here and make them climb over them. So we'll do that now. Okay, and uh, just to add the, the barricades, so in this one, obviously zombies can't really, you know, walk through barricades, so they're going to have to jump. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change it so they there's no planks for this, so they can just jump over it. So with this, it's always best to try and line up with the prop itself. And a good thing to remember as well, this little middle part of the fence here, that's the middle of where the zombies will jump from, so that's where they're going to that's where the animation of jumping will go. So try to keep anything that the zombies are jumping over where that line is if you can at the top. And it, otherwise it will just look a bit silly that this is jumping over midair. <laughs> Which, trust me, I've seen it. It is amusing, uh, but probably not what you want to see. And you can also as well use the invisible blocks that I was just using before um, to stop players from jumping over this as well. Because uh, zombies will be fine. Zombies do not get stopped by this at all. So we can even do that now. And there we go. So zombie, so zombies can get through this just fine. Uh, players can't though. So we've got that. So we'll add a new spawn. I believe we're on spawn 2 now. Is that right? Let me check. Nope, we're on spawn 3. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> Let's get rid of that, put these here. Then we'll just flip. I'll put a couple here. You don't need to go crazy. You might think, oh, well, two seems a bit generous. So I would have like 10. Trust me, it, <laughs> less is more sometimes. Uh, with this door here, I think we'll make this into another zombie uh, spawn area. So we'll just put a zombie here. And then I will uh, put, give a thing there. 
Um, and yes, you could really probably use this house and such if you wanted to. I mean, there's nothing stopping you from using the houses. I tend to avoid having places going indoors nowadays. Uh, back when I first did this map, you could go pretty much inside any big house. I mean, stuff like this you definitely couldn't go inside of. If I went uh, to the hotel over there on either side of the map, you could definitely go inside of that, which I thought was pretty cool at the time. Uh, but areas like this, like I was just talking about, this will probably be fine to let people in just because the doors are a bit open and it's a fairly spacious area. It doesn't have to be incredibly massive like this is. I mean, would it be beneficial? Sure, perhaps. But if you are wanting to use areas as big as this, just, you know, remember, you just got to keep one thing in mind. Can zombies actually get in and out of the area? If they can, great. And if they can't, hmm, that's a bit of a problem. <laughs> So we just gotta keep that in mind. So this is a cheap way to do it. I'm not gonna I'm not afraid to admit it. I will maybe put a mystery box here. Why not? If you wanted to go even further, you could even maybe uh, add a little uh, thing here where players have to go around a prop or two to get to the box. Which you know what, definitely not a bad thing. Just remember that if you are doing any changes like this, you do need to edit the nav mesh accordingly because otherwise it zombies will get stuck at the props because they don't see props they see squares on the floor here so always remember that so what's we'll one another one here because why not and maybe what we'll do is we'll maybe move this here now in case you worry blast doors are a bit does this look a bit cheap yes and to be honest it is because if zombies can easily just come through from behind and absolutely annihilate you when you're not expecting it so that's not, but that's the beauty. This is your config. It's not mine. I mean, technically, this is mine because I'm the one making it. But I mean that when it comes to your config, you're the one making it. You're your own artist, if you will. So, we're just going to make some changes here. So, we're going to get rid of that area in a second. We're just going to do the same thing here. And I always give them a little bit more room than, well, a little less room than necessary. So, you might notice I'm kind of overcompensating, like, yo, what about this little area here? Zombies love to get stuck. I will reiterate that until the end of time. Um, so just don't underestimate how easy they can get stuck, because trust me, they can. And you know what? We'll maybe go a little cheeky here. We'll maybe add another zombie spawn here. Why not? And really, that's kind of it. I mean, the only thing we could do now is add these uh, special spawns at <laughs> 31. That's a bit extreme. Uh, we'll add some of these here. And maybe here, we'll, we'll even worry about this here. We'll maybe just block off with a car or something, or even an oil tank. Why not? I'm sure no one will ever notice that. And yeah, if anything like this, just, again, use the use the uh, invisible walkway to stop players from just trying to get away from anywhere. So, you know, you got to have these physical props as well to let them know, hey, this is not accessible. You can't get through here. I mean, they can try, but that's why the invisible block creator is there, so they get discouraged from it. The only thing you can do from here on, really, is now to add some weapons. And yes, I am aware these two tools are open. Don't worry about them for now. Um, if you're making your own config in another map, and I'm sure you can be able to block them off yourself just by spawning some props and then delete that measure calling on the other side. If you are doing this on downtown like I am, um, that's up to you. If you want to block these tunnels off, it's just simple as just spawning a couple fences and then just doing that. And yes, this is very poor, but that's a way you can do it. Um, or if you want to use the entire map, then, you know, go crazy. Do whatever you want. Uh, for door, for guns, uh, in this area, let's see what I have available to me. And you'll keep your notice as well that, wow, we still got all the other weapons, even though I removed them. But that's just it. It only does it for the mystery box. Oh, not for this, unfortunately. I didn't ask if they could maybe have a thing to get rid of it, but oh well. So in here, let's see. What do I feel like having in here? I don't know. Where's do a well shotgun. Why not? And for that, um... I'd say 1,000 points is fine for that. I mean, it's a double barrel shotgun. I mean, you only get two shots in that. And yes, it's a double barrel shotgun. It's powerful. But again, two shots. 1,000 points is going to be more than enough for that, I, I reckon. And yes, the pa pack of punches right there. It's just for demonstration posts. This isn't meant to be like God's 
will or something. It's not like if you don't do it this way, you're officially a bad config creator or something. That is not what I'm trying to do here. I'm just trying to guide you on how to make a config. So with that out of the way, I think what I will do before I actually do anything else is I'm just going to make one little change because I noticed as well that some zombies will try to get through here, even though <laughs> this will be the longest way to get around an area. Zombies will surprise you in ways that you do not expect. Trust me, I would know. So just keep an eye on the patterns and such. And what we'll do now is we'll t save this and we'll give it a test. And now hopefully we'll get a little comp uh, montage from yours truly of what this looks like. See you soon. <laughs> Thank you.